Hello and welcome to the Hellraiser blog with Hertfordshire's Silver Tongue Cavalier. Me, Nicky Hania. Okay, um, just got back from holiday. Um, went to Italy, very nice. Was working most of the time. I was out there anyway on the phone permanently. My phone bill was going to be enormous, I think, and I, I get it. Um, but now back to, to work and uh, really looking forward to what we've, we've actually, we've got one thing actually quite frustrating because I can't speak about it yet. Uh, I go to America on Monday. I'm there for two weeks with unbeaten super middleweight Daryl Williams who's sparring. Uh, going to be going to uh, Jorge Linares and to Floyd Mayweather's respective gyms. Um, but when I get back from there then we'll be doing a big, big press conference and uh, it's going to be uh, very, very positive for um, a, a lot of the fighters that um, I represent. And if you're unattached professional boxer, I'd say it's well worth you getting in touch with me um, at this moment because um, there's going to be some massive opportunities and frankly it, it's going to take a lot of filling um, to, you know, we're going to have a lot of slots for a, a lot of fighters coming up, so get your manager to give me a call. Um, the thing this week that has really, really, really annoyed me, more than like, anything that's annoyed me for ages, uh, Tony Thompson. Apparently he failed his drugs test before he uh, boxed David Price. That was ages ago. It was months ago. I mean, Thompson has boxed several times since then. So has um, Price. And the, he, he was found guilty of taking a banned substance. To me, that should have... Whatever the system is, is not working. They should have had something in place. They find out quickly what he had or hadn't taken should have been released to the press straight away. I mean, it's just come out yesterday. <laughs> um, Price's career at the moment, I mean, I like David Price, his career's in tatters. He, I mean, boxing is very much about confidence. You get knocked out, that's terrible for a fighter. You get knocked out twice in a row, <laughs> that, that's career ending. And uh, in terms of developing the fight, they've got to be confident, they've got to be able to go forwards fearlessly and if they've been knocked out twice in a row that, that's gone that's that's gone um, we know boxing's a risky sport as it is regardless of what the drug was he took something that you're not allowed to and if you know, I think there's an argument he's saying oh well it wasn't performance in harm wherever it was it was banned you're not allowed to take it you took it for me personally the the results got to be scrubbed you never give David Price's confidence back to the level that he had it before. Impossible. Um, there's ramifications in so many ways, and it's really, I mean, look, obviously people know I'm involved in, in the bookmaking industry and in betting. Um, so, for example, imagine for the price fight, people bet on price. Do those people get their money back all these months later? Have they probably even not even kept their betting slips? If they bet online, maybe they, they, they can trace back and say, look, I, I put this bet, it was, you know, should be void. Very important for boxing to fall into line with bookmaking because where does a sponsorship come for for boxing? Watch, watch any boxing show on, on TV. Bookmaking is a big part of the sponsorship. We need to work with these guys and keep them happy. Um, stuff like that causes chaos for them. Imagine if Mayweather Pacquiao, if like in a year's time they find out one or other, no, there's n I've got no reason to believe either of them has taken anything, but what I'm saying is if they found out one of them had, well on the basis of the way that this David Price fight and the, the ban for Tony Thompson has been dealt with, the, you, I mean, imagine Mayweather had taken something, which he hasn't, but if he had, all the people that had bet on Pacquiao and lost their money, now probably going to say, yeah, but we, obviously the other guy was on drugs, we want our money back. That is hundreds of millions of dollars. It needs sorting. It absolutely needs to be sorted out. And from the sport aspect, that you can't have people taking stuff and then going off having however many fights. I'm not saying it's an easy problem to solve. I'm, I'm sure it isn't, because otherwise it probably already have something in place to, to deal with it. But for now, it's it's really. Um, it, I mean, it, 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 it's really really um, upset me the fact that 
our industry seems to be way, way, way behind the point that it needs to be at to run competently on that front. We must do something quick and decisive and transparent and easy for everyone to, to know how it works and to operate it. What's happened there with David Price is miles off the money and, and the UK drugs and anti-doping um, seriously need to look at how, how they deal with that because otherwise the, the, our industry cannot survive in an environment where there's things like that. I mean, that should have been to the 1970s or something. Now that should not be going on. Science has moved on. Um, sports science certainly has. And we, we need to act very decisively on that. Cut it out. Um, for David Price, I feel sorry. I mean, he could sue, I would imagine. He could sue now. He could... Um, I would imagine he'd... I mean... Because we're in, when you engage in a, a fight, you understand there's risks involved. But you agree in the contract for the fight to abide by the rules. Tony Thompson didn't abide by the rules. David Price got knocked out by a guy who did not stick to the rules. I'm sure, for one, that could say that's, a, I suppose it's assault. Because I agree to uh, let you punch me or to, to, to run the risk of you punching me on the basis that you respect the rules. But he didn't respect the rules. And that's a fundamental rule, not doping. Now, I understand it was a masking agent that, that Thompson took, so presumably we don't know what, what he might have taken um, because the masking agent covers it. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, but that, that's how it sounds to me. Um, that, that needs to be you know, eradicated and dealt with, and I'm, I'm embarrassed that, that, that the way that it, it's, it's come out like that. Um, you know, miles, uh, people must have known about it. I mean, apparently Thompson has a ban in this country. I didn't even know about it. I work in boxing 24-7. I hadn't heard th about that until what, two days ago. Um, so that's that. Other than that, well, we've got... We, I'm, I'm off to Vegas on Monday with Daryl Williams. When we get back from, from Vegas, we're going to have a huge, huge press conference, and we, we've got something really big and exciting that's going to happen. For me, certainly, it would eclipse anything I've ever done before in boxing. It's going to be huge. Um, it's going to um, be very exciting, a lot of hard work, but I'm really, really excited. For, you know, as I work in boxing, I see myself more as a manager who promotes. So what really gets me excited and, and going is when I deliver really good opportunities for my fighters. Um, maybe one day it'll be different. Like if Sky TV offer me you know, however many million pounds a year to, to run their boxing, I'll be there like a shot, obviously. <laughs> uh, but at the moment, I'm more interested in, in developing the guys. And I know the deal that I've now got is just going to make it a million times better for my guy. You know, we can really put a platform here, attract better standard of fighter. And uh, the fighters that we have got will get their opportunities a lot easier with the platform that we're going to have. More to come. Watch the Hellraiser blog. Retweet and watch. And... Um, if you enjoy the blogs, please follow it on YouTube because um, I've just noticed in the last few weeks that the, the, follow, the number of followers on YouTube has really increased a lot and uh, I've started getting all sorts of messages and it's, it's really positive to get feedback from people who enjoy watching the blog and have their own points of view that they'd like to raise and then you know, I can even mention them on my next blog and you know, that's how we, we can sort of progress and further our understanding of various situations that uh, arise in boxing. Anyway, that's me done for now. I'm at the uh, Landmark Hotel at, at the moment um, in Marlebone, where Frank Warren does a lot of his press conferences. Uh, I have a meeting here in about 10 minutes, so I'm going to leave you. Cheers for watching, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.